Number one, write this down, breaking the curse of poverty. Part of letting God's people go is breaking the curse of financial famine. And it is a curse. And I'm going to prove it to you from the Bible that it is a curse. And I'm going to prove it to you from the Bible that Jesus set us free from that curse. Luke chapter 4, 18, uh, verse, verses 8, 4, 18. Read with me. Say, the Spirit of the Lord, the of the Lord is, upon is upon me. Now, the anointing came upon Jesus for service. Okay? So the anointing came upon me to bring freedom. That's why the anointing came on me, to bring freedom. And the same things happened in the ministry of Jesus. The anointing, the Bible said that God went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. But it was the anointing of God upon Jesus that was doing the, move, the, the miracles and the power and the healing. Even Jesus himself said, the spirit of the Lord or the anointing of God is upon me. And then he says, this is why. Because he has anointed me to preach, somebody say, the good news, the good news. to the poor. And then he says, the anointing uh, heals the brokenhearted. And how many have come to Freedom City and you had a broken heart and you came here and God healed your broken heart? It's because, it's because there's an anointing over us to, to do this. That's why no matter where I'm at in the world, the people that always I minister to the most are the broken people. They were asking the other day about ads. We're going to put ads out. And they said, who do you want to target? And they said, well, we should probably target brokenhearted people. Why? Because that's just what God brings to us. Because there is an anointing in this church, in this ministry, to heal broken hearts. Can I get a witness a little bit better than that? Come on. And it's real. It's because my heart was broken. God's anointing healed my heart. And whatever you get healed of, you carry that anointing that healed you. Then he says, not only heal the broken, but the anointing is to proclaim liberty to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind. So those bondages that are in people's life, how many had some bondages in your life that are no longer in your life since you've been coming here? It's because the anointing sets you free from that bondage. If you're going to clap, clap like the anointing sets you free from that bondage. Then it goes on to say, recovery of sight to the blind. That's healing, but also vision. The anointing gives vision. And then it says to set at liberty those that are oppressed. So that's, that's depression, anxiety, mental disorders. For whatever reason, Jesus sends me a lot of crazies. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, that was not me. That was not me. And you're lying right now. I'm just kidding. But for whatever reason, I'm good at getting people's mind back. Why? Because I'd lost my mind. I was fully demon-possessed. This is the testimony. I was demon-possessed. I was demon-possessed, and I lost my mind. But God, God taught me through His Word how to put my mind back together again. I couldn't, I couldn't read. I couldn't talk. I couldn't be around people. I was, I was, I was a very weird person because, because of the demon possession, and the demons put, up, put, put on a personality. But when the demon left, that personality left, and I didn't know who I was. So I had to rebuild my mind. Like in the book of Jeremiah, it said you have to uproot and tear down and build and plant. That's what God had to do in my mind. He had to take down the strongholds of orphan heart and insecurity. And I'm not good enough and I don't have what it takes to. I'm more than a conqueror and I can do all things through Christ. And I'm forgetting what's behind and I'm reaching forward to ahead. Somebody shout like God can rebuild your mind. And maybe you're here today, you're watching. And you know, maybe you're struggling with a, a depression or an anxiety and you feel hopeless and, like, you know, and you feel like you can never change. Well, let me, let me be an example to you and let thousands of others be an example that God can deliver those that have been oppressed. Even oppression of demonic activity in the occult or witchcraft, God can set you free because there is an anointing to deliver us from that which is oppresses. But I want you to focus on the first thing the anointing does, and that is the anointing is good news to the poor. Why would he say that? The anointing heals the broken. The anointing sets captives free. The anointing casts out demons. But then here, the anointing does what for the poor? It makes them feel better about being poor? At least you're going to go to heaven when you die? That doesn't make any sense. No, because poverty is a demonic curse, and it must be broken in the spirit before it's broken in the natural. 
Let me tell you why. Because poverty is a spirit. And every spirit has a mentality. That's why you, when people come to Christ, they get free from that poverty spirit, but they have a poverty mindset. And until you deal with the mindset, they'll never prosper like God wants them to prosper. So we must have them free from a poverty mentality and a poverty spirit. And I know poverty spirit. I could smell poverty spirit. And then it likes to wrap itself in religion. Like many years ago, people wouldn't even allow women and men to sit together because of religious teachings and misinterpretation of Scripture. Many years ago, you couldn't even wear makeup in church. Now you guys have a lot of makeup. Praise God for freedom. But, but where do they get that? From the, from the Bible, because they misinterpreted the Word of God. And we're going to deal with some misinterpretation of the Scripture that have brought poverty to whole people groups. And they'll fight you on it because it's a belief system that has been passed down from generation to generation. I've taught you this in the past. The brilliance of Pharaoh was not in, his, in, in, in Egyptians ability to build. The brilliance of Pharaoh was in the taskmasters where they would find uh, unruly, very aggressive children and take them from their parents and raise them in the school of the taskmaster in the art of manipulation, abuse, and control. And those, that was the power of Egypt because they would abuse God's people into control. By the time you got to the second and third generation, you don't even need the taskmasters. The parents were telling the kids, we don't belong on those side of the tracks. We don't, we, we're not owners. We rent for the rest of our lives. This is how it is with people like us. But the devil is a liar. I've come to address that curse somebody shout let my people go so you we're going to talk about prosperity over the next few days but you need to hear the heart of it you need to hear the background and why i'm so aggressive with it i'm not a greedy man i'm a very generous man I'm a very blessed man. I'm a very wealthy man. But I don't live off you. I live off my own business because God has made me rich. Come on, somebody. And I want to be a blessing. And I want to teach you that if God can bring me out of the hood, he can bring you out too. Excuse me. You got to hear my heart because if you, don't, if you just hear words, you can just... Get little tid tidbits here and here and not really understand the spirit of what I'm carrying. It's love. I didn't want to pastor. I didn't want to do this. But God put a love in my heart for the people. And you're not going to be in bondage in any area, including your finances. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For he has anointed me to break a spirit of poverty. My mom's here, we should testify. We grew up poor, poor, very poor. I feel brokenness on me right now. Thank God, that's part of prosperity. Carry humility, come on. The, the more you get blessed, the more humble you should be. Say amen, it's not fake humility, not a false humility, but a genuine brokenness. I'm trembling, I feel the, this is the word of God for somebody. Somebody's going to hear it. Somebody's going to catch a hold of this. And somebody's going to come out. And that Pharaoh is going to be, that devil, he didn't want you to be here. I'm telling you right now, some of you fought the devil just to be here. I had one pastor on his way here. A car hit him. But he's, he's going to make it tomorrow. But I said, the devil don't want this, this conference happening. But don't matter, we're having it. We grew up in poverty. That's all we knew. Government cheese. Come on, big, big, I'm 50, so we, we didn't get the big blocks back then. Remember the food stamps, you knew we didn't want to bring them out, you're embarrassed. Now it's got EBT cards, you could be like, act like you actually got some money. But back then it was big old, you had, the, you had the big old coupons, remember that? You get them coupons and you, were, you thought it was, you, Disneyland showed up. And we were waiting at the first of the month for our check. By the time we got to the middle of the month, we, we, know, we were going to the, you know, all the little spots to get food. And thank God for those places that helped us. But God has something more for us. Thank God for the government that helped us. But God has something more for us. When I got saved, I had to break that poverty mentality. I remember I was on general relief in the men's home, recovery home. It was there for, ours is called healing, healing place. It's bougie, you know what I mean? These guys are rolling. They got a million dollar home. It's crazy. You know? 
we were doing car washes for Jesus, man. They, these guys that don't, you're blessed. Say I'm blessed. Come on, we're trying to. Why, why do why do I give them nice furniture? Why do I give them a nice home? Why? Because I want them to get a new mentality. And so I remember my pastor saying, I, I, I was in the home and I, I, I was still getting that general relief check, two hundred dollars, and I didn't. I, I was on it for a while, so I didn't want to let it go. Finally, I got a job, and I said, Pastor, should I uh, keep getting the check because there's an extra $200? He said, that's poverty mentality, man. You got to let that check go and trust God. I said, and I said, like, okay. And I did. But see, that was a mentality. Mentality. All right, now I hope I communicated my heart. Now let's, let's deal with the devil now. Deuteronomy 28, 44, and 45. They will lend. This is the curse. Okay. I recommend you read Deuteronomy 28 over and over again. Because you're going to find out what's yours and what's not yours. It says, they will lend to you, but you will not lend to them. They will be the head and you will be the tail. All these curses will come upon you and they will pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed. He's talking about financial famine. Haggai chapter 1 verse 5 and 6, we find the curse manifesting itself in the, in the life of God's people again. Even though God made a pro pro he made provision for them not to come under a financial curse and lack and ruin, they still found themselves in it. Look at what it says. Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much. It means you worked hard, but you brought in a little bit. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never, you're never full. You put clothes on, but you're not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a bag with holes in it. That's a curse. Now you're getting quiet because some of you are there right now. But Jesus has set you free from this. And we're going to deal with it. I, I, as I was studying this, I need like a week of this, but that's why I love Prosperity Conference. I see, at least this is the time of the year we can focus on some, some of these areas. Deuteronomy 28 is the blessing, the opposite of the curse. Read with me out loud. Jason, put your name. Come on. Deal in, come on, put your name. Demo, come on, put your name. Monique, come on, put your name. You shall lend to many nations. Watch this. But you shall not. Is that in the Bible? Yeah, brother, but that's Old Testament. Oh, there we go. Like God changed his mind. Like the Old Testament blessings are better than the new. Religion is dangerous. You shall lend to many nations, but you don't have to borrow. Imagine God says there's a level that I could take you to that you don't have to borrow nothing. Our mind, our mind shut, shut, it'll shut down. You could go to the car dealership and say, uh, yes, go ahead and wash that car for my daughter. Yes, sir, w w what bank will we finance it through? No bank, I got the money right here. Go wash the car. Come on, somebody. Okay, sit down, please. No way. It can't happen. Don't worry about it. It won't happen for you. But I'm, I'm, I'm trusting that somebody's going to read the Bible and say, God has power to do that. I'm going to believe God. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow. Because the Bible said he specifically prospered them little by little so they can manage it. Manage everything about it, including the heart. But the Lord, this is his will. It doesn't change his perfect will. He wants us to literally be able to buy things cash. I'm telling you right now, every building we own will be out of debt within five years. Verse 13. And the Lord, come on. You don't, you're shutting down on me, look. And the Lord 
will make you. That means you're not that right now, but he's going to make it. He's going to make you. Say, I'm going to be the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. It goes on, if you heed the commandment of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and today's command is being led by the Holy Spirit and obeying the written, the written word of God. Galatians 3.13. Read with me. Say, Christ. Christ. How many love Jesus Christ? Yeah. Right. How many have a, a cross? I have a cross. I love Jesus. You notice he's not on there anymore. Come on now. He's gone. He's at the right hand of God now. Praying for me every day. That I prosper and be in health. How many love Jesus Christ? All right. All right. Say it with me. Christ. Say the next word. Now what does that mean? Come on. You've been with me long enough. What, tell your neighbor what does has mean. It means it already happened. Yes or no? Yes. Where's English major? Come on. How, how, many, how many graduated fifth grade, right? Right? Say has. has. Means it already. Has. Let's read again. Christ has what? Redeemed. The word redeemed is, is a term that was used when you purchased a slave. So somebody was a slave and say they were a $10,000 slave and a redeemer would come and say, I want to buy them. And they'd give the owner $10,000 and they would redeem that slave. And then they would say, you are no longer a slave because I paid for you. You could go free now. Christ is our redeemer. What, we, what were we enslaved to, pastor? Thank you for asking. Christ, read, come on, Christ has redeemed Jason from the he set me free from the curse having become a curse cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree so on that tree he took every curse every bloodline curse every Lozano curse every Takahashi curse every Kahedo curse Come on, somebody. In my family, the, there's, there's been a curse of poverty. Been in our, it's been in all of our family. Nobody come up out. Nobody, 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 nobody is successful long term. And see, here's the, the thing. You got some people who got money, but they're still under a, a poverty curse. Because they got sorrow with that money. We're going to deal with that in a little while. Because some people work their way out of poverty, but they still have a poverty spirit. And they live with fear always that they're going to run out one day. And you see the curse manifesting in other areas of their life. They overwork. They don't pay attention to their children. They end up divorced. They end up broken. They end up all stressed out. 65-year-olds having nervous breakdowns because they didn't do it God's way. I'm talking about being blessed God's way. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, Jesus Christ set us free from every curse of the law, including the curse of financial lack. That's it. Psalms 105.37 says, He brought the sons of Israel out of Egypt with what? He brought them out with what? You know, the children of, of Israel coming out of Egypt was a typology of our salvation. And the, the Red Sea represents our baptism. That we went in as slaves, but we came out as free men. And who the Son says free is free indeed. But 
lot of us, we're happy because we got, we got our sins out. <laughs> we got some peace of mind out. We even got our heart, our broken heart healed out, but we haven't got our money out. And you're not really free until you're totally free. Including being financially free. But it all starts with revelation. You got to get a revelation of it. And you got you to remove all thoughts that money is evil. And we're going to deal with that spirit today. That root in many of you. Because until you do with your conscience and you deal with it in the area of money and you confront it in a biblical way, you won't see the finances that God has for you. Filthy lucre, people call it. People with money are like, oh yeah, they got money. You know, the whole society we live in is against people with money. The whole, we want to tax the, tax the rich, give to the poor, no problem. But the problem is, the rich got rich for a reason. So the only ones that are really going to suffer is the poor. All the movies, look at who's, who's, who's the devil in all the movies. Corporate America. Corporate Europe. Corporate Asia. Corporate India. I don't care what nation and what, you know, it could be Bollywood and the enemy is the corporate. Because we have a mentality and the devil's good at having money is evil. People with money are evil. Yes, some are, but not all of them. I've met billionaires who give $600 million a year to the kingdom of God. How's that evil? How's that evil? To help the poor, to dig wells in Africa, to help the broken. Come on, somebody. No, it's not evil. I'm getting ahead of myself. Job 36, 11, read with me. If they listen, and you got to be able to listen. That's, that's part of the problem. I don't have time to teach that, but I could teach that for like a week. Ask your neighbor, are you good at listening to God and godly counsel? Not, not just listen, but obey. Because some people act like they listen. You know, kids. You ever met kids? Yeah, like, like, take out the trash. Okay, Dad. 20 minutes later, he's still on the video game. What's going on here? So you may be listen, but how many know we have to listen with the intent to obey? If we listen and obey God, then put your name there. Then will be with throughout her or his lives. All their years will be somebody clap like that's you right there. All right, number two. Just say this, I am free from the curse of poverty. And it was weird, and, and I, I, I've seen this in my family, and I've seen this in so many families. I've been pastoring for 21 years, preaching for 31. And, I, and, I've, and I've seen it over the years. It's like, it's like you go f 10 steps forward, and I used to have this feeling, and some of you have it, and maybe today you can get set free from it. I used to have a feeling that things were going too good. And that something, tragedy was going to happen, tragedy, and it was going to take me back down to ground zero. And guess what always hap would happen? Something would happen and go back to ground zero. And then I had this weird religious teaching that maybe God's teaching me a lesson. It wasn't God, it was a demon. And I was giving him permission through my thoughts and my words. But I don't believe something bad's going to happen to me no more. I believe something good's going to happen to me now. And I don't, watch me, watch me. And I work hard on this. I thank God for good jobs. I thank God for good careers. God gives those. But I thank God our faith is not in our job. And our faith is not in our government. And our faith is not in our economy. My Bible says it's in God that we put our faith. Our forefathers knew this. Our forefathers understood it. They even wrote it on our bills. In God we trust. Not in Wall Street. I have stocks. I trade all the time. Trade, trade, trade. That thing is so unstable. Come on. Thank God I don't got my trust in Wall Street. I got my trust in God. If God wants to use my stocks, praise God. But either way, I'm always going to come up. 
if everyone gets fired and the company shuts down, I'm still gonna be all right. God is my source. That's a mindset. Say, that's a mindset. Number two, this is powerful. I think that's good right there. Anyway, let me say this and then we'll get to this. I, 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 I like to explain it this way. Um, maybe I can get an illustration. You want to be in the illustration? Can you jump up here? Who else can jump up here? here well, just, I just need like, okay, come on. You, you, can you jump? Okay. Okay. Are, are you Hispanic or Cambodian? I'm Filipino. Filipino. Okay, come on. Come on. Come over here. You're a little different than a Cambodian, but you look like, Filipinos look like Mexican, but Asian. It's weird. Okay. I think my children look Filipino. All right, now. So... We're going to say, which one do you want to uh, be on your way to prosper? Okay, so stand right here, okay, and say that drum set is expensive. So you're on your way to prosper, okay? Okay, you, you're going to walk toward it, and then you two, you're going to grab them here when I tell you to grab them, all right? And you're going to grab them here, okay? And then you're going to pull them back, but not too hard, because I, I don't want no lawsuit. Okay, now. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Okay, start walking slowly. Little, little, that's good, actually. Now you're on your way. You're on your way. You're going to prosperity. You're fired up. Get them. And this is what happened. And pull them back. And I, watch this chonies. Come on, somebody, now watch. I want you to see this, because this, this is what I used to feel like. Like a rubber band on my back, pulling me back to poverty. Keep going forward, slow. That was good, you did really good, by the way. Come on, be on it. Now, pull them back. Pull them back, see? And that's, what's, that's a spirit behind it. And that thing would follow me. Thank you so much. Give these boys good-looking men. I think they're single. Love the Lord. Okay, now. Now listen. It felt like it was following me. And it was a curse that was in my bloodline. It was in my family. Nobody in my family graduated. Nobody in my family had a degree, college, none of that. My mom finally broke through and got her AA, but we still were struggling. Because it's not just natural. We're dealing with the spirit. And there's inroads into our family that brought that spirit in, and our family had a mindset. And we adopted the mindset. So even though Jesus set us free, we didn't have freedom in our mind. And so there had to be a metamorphosis. How to think God's way about finances. How to think God's way about prosperity. How to think God's way about tithing and giving and generosity. Listen, you might be generous. It, it's going to be hard to find a more generous person in this room than me. And people have testified. I'm bragging now. Come on now. This is on the Lord. People testify to me about the all, in every nation. This is what they say about me. Pastor Jason is the most generous person I know. I, now, I don't think I am. I think there's a lot of people more. But I try to be. Some guy came to my house just yesterday to do a job. Came to do a job. And I gave him a brand new Burberry's. He looked at me like, I'm here to do a job. This is worth more than the job. And I was just like, the Lord told me to bless you. He almost cried. But, come on. That's a mindset. That's a mindset. I don't have a mindset of running out. I have a mindset of running over. Come on now. I have a mindset of press down, a mindset of shaking together, a mindset of running over. I have a mindset that God is my only source. And it probably comes from the fact that my dad abandoned me. So I didn't have a dad to provide. And my stepdad he wouldn't work. And he would wait for the welfare check. And I grew up with the welfare mentality. And the men in my life never worked. And the dad that was supposed to provide was gone. And he still lived at his mom and dad's house. At my age. So that was my only, how, how am I supposed to think better? And some of you grew up like that, and you want to break out, and you're like, straight, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> but until you go after that mind, and ask God to help you, and go in the Word of God, and do a deep dive in the area of prosperity, and get your mind <laughs> renewed, you're not going to respond right to life. And practice makes perfect. And you don't get there overnight. Amen. Somebody. Put your hands together. This is great teaching. 
Give God the glory. Come on, give God the glory. Now I'm going to go deep. You ready to go deep? Put your scuba diver gear. You know, we're going to go deep. Put the air out of your ears. And push. You ready? You sure you're ready? All right. Yes, I'm trying. I really am. I'm trying to teach preach a little bit, though. You know, I want to teach. Number two. This is, this is key. This is another key. How to manage the desire to be rich. Because <laughs> if that desire is mismanaged, you'll walk away from Jesus. If that desire is managed, you'll walk toward Jesus. You want to learn or no? All right. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 6 is the devil's, he's used 1 Timothy chapter 6 to keep God's people broke for thousands of years. I'm, I'm going to deal with an old spirit today. 1 Timothy chapter 6 is what people use to bring you into poverty. And anytime somebody like me steps up, they say, oh, that's one of those 1 Timothy 6 preachers. And they'll quote 1 Timothy 6 about these kind of people who think godliness is a means of gain. Stay away from them. And they think that because I'm preaching about godliness and gain that I'm part of 1 Timothy 6. But it wasn't even talking about that at all. So I'm going to give you a little history of 1 Timothy 6. So if the devil ever tries to use this scripture against you, you're going to rebuke him and put him in his place. Put him in his place. Put him in his place. Because this thing will keep you poor. It, it, it kept me away from preachers that preached the word on prosperity. It kept me away from them for years. Until I had to learn that the, they were teaching out of alignment. 1 Timothy 6, and I'm going to say something, and don't get offended. 1 Timothy 6 is about slavery. It is. Because the Bible was written when there were slaves. And 1 Timothy 6 was, there were slaves, and Paul was saying, you have to learn how to be, even in a hard place, still submitted. And you're not submitted to them, you're submitted to God, and trust that God is going to lift you out. And he did. They came out. Come on, somebody. But a group of preachers rose up and said, no, we are not bound by any man. Watch me. And so they started rebelling against their owners. And they started getting persecuted. And the witness for Christ was gone. And so they rose up this second, they started stirring up, and they started using this teaching to gain wealth. Not preaching that God wants you blessed and the covenant of Abraham, but people want to throw all that into this text, and it's not what they're talking about. You're not ready to go to the next level. I don't think you are. Come on, pull this out of me, because I'm, I'm, this is an international word. You say, Pastor, what is, what is, what, explain a little more. Okay, say, Isaac, you, you have a company, right? So you're the boss, and you have people working under you. It would be me telling them, don't listen to him. Show up when you want. Don't do as little amount of work as you want to do, and you better expect him to pay you the whole thing. What would happen to them, Isaac? And Paul's like, what are you guys doing? We're never going to change it like this. And the name of the Lord was smeared. And so they came out with this, this whole teaching, and they said, this is what they said, you're evil. Like the, they would say to the boss, you're evil, you're this, you're that. And they'd get everyone stirred up, and then they would get money from them. That's what 1 Timothy 6 is talking about. You have to understand that if you want, you're going to understand what he drops next. And by the way, slavery is bad. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on, give God a praise. And, but, 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 you got to remember, Christianity was written in slavery. But the word of God brought us out. 
Somebody shout amen. amen. And if we're going to stay free, it's going to be the word of God that's going to keep us free. Give God one more praise like who the sun sets free. I know people don't want to talk about this the way it is, but that's how it really is. And then verse 6. Look, it's getting tense in here. Look at this. No, no, no. Just want to make sure you understand what's happening here. It's like you rolling up to work tomorrow. You start at 8, you roll up at 10. And you know what they were even doing worse? Say you were the owner of the company and you worked for him, but you knew he was a brother, you would even treat him worse. And they would say things like, you know, I have the yoke of Christ. I don't have to be under you. I'm going to show up when I want to show up. I know lunch is 35 minutes. I'm going to take three hours. And it was like this. And what you going to do about it, fool? That's what they were teaching. And Paul's like, this, these guys are madness. There's a heresy. And then preachers want to put preachers that preach prosperity into this context. It's not even similar. And they go on YouTube and blast and blast prosperity preaching. And they keep people poor. Because until you hear the good news to the poor, prosperity to the poor, you'll never come out of poverty. And if your preacher doesn't have the courage to preach it, you're never going to come out of poverty. You may come out of it. You may come out of depression. You may come out of sin, but you ain't coming out of poverty. But the devil's a liar. I'm coming out with my silver and my gold. Shout amen. Let, 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 let my people Give God a shout like we're coming out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Give God a shout like you're already out. Let's go deeper. Can we go deeper? How to manage the, the, the desire to want to be rich. Can we read? Godliness, read with me. This is the same thing. Now, he's, now he just finished rebuking them, and now he's saying, now this is the balance. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. What do you mean, Pastor? Naked you came in? And naked you be going. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you understand that? All right. And he's teaching them, having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. So what does that mean? That's foundation. Because if you're not satisfied with food and clothing, you'll never be satisfied with more. I'm preaching prosperity right now. I'm preaching the whole thing today. Because our society says, when you get some new lips, girl, you're going to be happy. Man, they got, they got like, uh, what, is, what does Noah call that stuff, babe? Like knockoff Botox now. I was driving by one place, and they were doing like $10 Botox. I said, that ain't no Botox. That's like lip balm. They're shooting in your lip. Come on. So you be oozing in the middle of the day. Uh oh, the lady's getting offended at me. Okay, okay. I was just joking. I was just joking. But our society says, when you get that new Louis Vuitton girl, then you know you're going to be it. Oh, you see them shoes? Oh, once you get them shoes, you roll up, bam, girl. you like, oh, brother, you got to get that shirt, man. That shirt is fly. And when you get that new car, that Lambo, Whoa, man, you're going to be the Mizan. Stop. No, no. You the Mizan right now. I'm preaching already. Come on, somebody. All right. All right. All right, sit down. I ain't got enough time, but it's, I, I'm prophesying more time right now. Now, listen. That's why I told you we got to cut. There's a lot of. We'll teach in the next three nights. Come on now. Now listen, listen. I had to learn this. This is, part of the, this is part of that prosperity test. I had to learn to get on the bus with my bus tokens. Ding, 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 ding. Is it EBT card now? I don't even know. It goes shh, shh, probably now. I fancy it. But back then, it ding, 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 ding. Come on now. 
like a lottery, man, like, the, like a slot machine. Ding, 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 come on. We get bus tokens now. You were like rolling. But I'd be on the bus. And I wasn't like, I'm on the bus. I'm so not happy. I was on the bus rolling. I got a free driver. I'm in the Word. Come on, I'm happy. <laughs> then later on, I got a new car. I, no, I, I got a degree. Yes. I'm very educated now. They call me Dr. J. Come on now. I, I, got, I got my degrees. I don't got a degree. I got degrees. And I got me a new job. I got me a secretary. Yes. Can you go get me? It's Mr. Lozano. Would you like a latte? Yes. Make that double shot and put a splenda in there. <laughs> Come on now. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. I'm just trying to help somebody. And I got me a new car. I got me one in the back in the day. It was called a Mitsubishi Galant. Yeah. My friend lost it. And he's like, take over payments. I'm like, let's go. I just start taking over payments. Man, I went from like a beat up car to a Galant. Brand new. Candy apple red. Tan interior. Nine piece surround sound system. Bumping Christian rap. Come on. So I was like, uh, I had my finger. Uh. And I had to switch. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I was feeling good like a man of God should. Finally had a three-bedroom house. Got my own bathroom. King-size bed. And a desk. Man, I was like, praise the Lord. One day I was rolling in my office. And I said, Lord, something ain't right. I don't got the joy of the Lord. The Lord's like, because you're trying to replace me with these things. And I ain't never going to be replaced. These things don't make you. These are my blessing. They're for your enjoyment. But don't you replace me with anything. I said, my bad. And I learned. I learned. A car don't make you happy. A situation don't make you happier. You're happy because you're saved and you're sanctified and you're full of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout amen. I'm talking to you now. All right, sit down. I got to keep teaching. I got to keep teaching. Can I keep going? Verse 9. Read with me. But those, read it, who what? Fall into temptation and a snare and to many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and have pierced themselves through many sorrows. Man, you read that, you're thinking, I don't want no money. Man, I, I read that. I'm just telling me how I, when I first read that, I said, I don't want no money. Nothing, no way. I ain't losing my faith. I ain't panging no sorrow. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, no, kind of evil. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't want no money. No, I got no desire for no money, Lord. No desire, Lord. Get that, deep, that wicked desire out of me, Lord. Cast it out of me. We're going to deal with that phony spirit. Okay, now. No, because this is real. This deals with motive. First thing is contentment. It's a foundation. Am I satisfied in him and him alone? And you'll have to pass that test. And you'll be, you'll be tested on that. And some of you are there right now, and you're passing. And some of you, well, I'm going to pray for you. But here it is. You ready? It's motive. I said, Lord, how are you going to sit there and say, if I desire to be rich, it's wrong? Because you know I desire to be rich, Lord. He goes, exactly. Like he, and he told me this. He goes, drive around the block. I started driving around the block, nice neighborhood, looking at every. I said, Lord, what are you trying to say? He's like, what I'm trying to say is you want to be rich because you want to build my kingdom. It's that simple. Here's my question for you. Do you want to be rich? Don't answer me. Why? Is it to be seen? You know, like like some, some of my neighborhoods, you got people, they got 27 Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Rolls Royces, and I ain't hating on any of it. But he could just tell they're trying to make up for something they don't have. 
and another Rolls Royce won't do it. You could have seven Rolls Royce and a pink one, girl, and you're still going to feel insecure until you get... Mm. I ain't hating because the devil, God, those cars ain't for the devil's kids. Those are for God's kids. But I ain't even going to talk about that. I'm going to deal with the motive. Because why do we want to be rich? And you're going to have to deal with that. You're going to have to deal with that motive. Genuinely, why? I say, Lord, make me a billionaire. I pray that every day. Make me a billionaire, Lord. Because I saw that billionaire give $600 million. If I had 600 million, we could shake all these cities. We could put churches. We can, we can put homes. We can help so many people. You see, there's a little bit of claps because some of the motive ain't right in here. And you're going to end up going after the money like I've seen so many here prosperity, but they don't have that pure motive. And they go after the money and they get some of it and then they're in church less and less. They're serving less and less. Their commitment for Christ is less and less. And instead of getting closer to God, like Paul said, you're getting further from God. But if the motive is pure, and I want to further the kingdom of God, I want to plant churches, life-giving churches that change families, touch young people, raise up children in the things of God, set people free from horrible bondage and addiction. I want to be a church that wins souls and make disciples. I want to plant these churches. See that? I'm talking to somebody right now. Listen, I have a dream. I want to plant 10 of these just in, in L.A. alone. I think it will help our city. What do you think? Come on, somebody. Now listen to me. I, you know, God put that in my heart. You know, it's going to, each campus is probably going to cost $20 million. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So I need $200 million now. Come on. Come on, somebody. I need you to get this, man. Are you catching it or no? Are you, are, 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 you want me to quit now? Because I'll quit. There's like half of you. Some of you are tired already. You're like, I'm done. Okay. Now, because I'm dealing with your heart. Because money is the great motive revealer. It shows everybody who we truly are. If you're greedy, it's going to show it. If you're in love with God, it's going to show it. If you're sold out to God, it's going to show it. If you're not, it's going to show it. Money is the great revealer. It's neither good nor evil. It just magnifies what's in the human heart. The unhealthy desire to be rich for selfish re reason is called the love of money. Why do you want that? Well, because I want to enjoy it. That's not a problem. No, no issue. But is it for other deeper reasons? You're trying to find your identity in it? You're trying to replace God? Because some of you are happy and you love your wife, but if you had another $250,000, would you still stay with her? If, girl, if you had another million dollars, would you still stay with them? Don't, don't look, don't, just look straight ahead. I'm about to slap somebody, I can feel it. I'm just kidding. Okay, I gotta say that, because nowadays, you know, this pastor slapping people, they take that out. I'll slap somebody, I'll slap somebody, I'll slap somebody, I'll slap somebody. Look at him, he's demon possessed. I'll slap somebody, I'll slap somebody. You with me? No, listen to me. Some of you are, you know, real estate, and some of you are, I know we got some people, some of you are in business, and what if you, what if you cleared a million this year? No, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Where will you, will you be around? Huh? What about five? What about 25? Do you have a number? What I call a sellout number? I don't. I already have a dream for 250 million today. 
already sold out. Long, I sold out on that bus. Come on, somebody. I sold out a long time ago to the kingdom. Y'all getting nervous in here, huh? I should pick up an offering just to really get the devil mad. All right. This kind of desire doesn't draw us closer to God, but further. Proverbs 10, 22. I want you to read with me out loud. Say it. The okay, stop. Read it again. And instead of a person, put your name. The blessing of the Lord makes Jason. What does the word rich mean? I'm going to be a billionaire. A tri uh, that everyone's going to make different. They have different gifts, different assignments. So I'm not saying you're all going to be millionaires. But I am saying you, the word rich means abundantly supplied for. So read it with that in, in your mind. Say the blessing, the blessing of the Lord, the Lord makes a person abundantly supplied for. How many believe that every need you have is met and you have enough to give to every good work? Clap like that's your future. All right, let's, let's, let's read it again out loud. Read it. The, and he... So there's, as a believer, if you're going after money the wrong way, because, listen, this is what, this is what, because if you don't have a desire to be rich, you'll never be rich. Because whatever, you, whatever your desire is, that's the direction your life will go. I have a desire to be rich for the kingdom. And so the motive is pure, so the wisdom begins to flow. Joseph had a desire to be rich to save the kingdom. And where there was, where there was pure motive, there was pure wisdom. But if the water is polluted, the wisdom can't flow, then you start coming up with cockamine ideas. On how am I going to get rich? And you start getting out of character. And you start making bad decisions. And you start compromising because you're in the flesh. You're not in the spirit. But when the desire to be rich is from God for the kingdom, wisdom flows, knowledge flows, favor flows, understanding flows, open doors flow, angels move on assignment on your behalf. Clap like you got a blessing working for you now. Can, can you handle any more? Read with me Genesis 26, 12, and 13. This is Abraham's son had the blessing named Isaac, and he read it. He what? Stop. He planted crops in a famine. Everybody around was starving. The gland wasn't producing. Everybody was in a recession. Everybody was in decline. Everybody was barely making it and not making it. And in that land he planted... And in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold because the Lord done blessed him and the man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very... What did that? What did that? The blessing of God. Can we be trusted with the all-powerful blessing of God? Getting... I'm going to keep teaching. 1 Timothy 6, 17 and 19. This is in the same chapter. It started out rebuking these false preachers. Then it goes into motive. And then now he's going to te keep teaching. Watch this. Verse 17 through 19. Read out loud. Teach those who are in this world not to be. Why? I was, I was talking to a, um, a therapist yesterday, a uh, physical therapist. And she said, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say this city. She's like, I don't like to go to that city. I said, why? She goes, everybody is stuck up. And I couldn't deny it. I said, ah, that's kind of the jacket on that city. We're better than everybody. 
All in debt, but you're better. Okay, fine. That's people who got money and didn't, have, didn't know who they were. We're not going to be those kind of people. We're not going to be those kind of people. We're going to know, we're going to be in chair one. Say amen. We know who we are. We know who, we know whose we are. And we know that if it wasn't for God, we would be nothing. <laughs> Teach those who are rich in this world not to be what? Proud. Not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. But their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need Wow. Is that in the Bible? Why don't we read that again? Say, who richly, who richly gives, us gives us all we need. All we need. Tell your neighbor, God, God richly gives us richly all, we need all we need for our enjoyment. How many, have, how, many have, how many have ever blessed somebody? How many got some kids? And how many of your kids wanted something for Christmas and they bugged you like a year? And you got it for them. How did you feel? You're probably relieved. Oh, Lord, I finally know. When it was time to open that package, and they're shaking it, almost broke it. Don't shake it, me. <laughs> And they opened it and they saw it and they got so excited. What did that do for your heart? Well, where do you think you learned that from? When God gets to bless you, he gets happy. But imagine God's like, I'm going to bless them and then they're going to act all proud. I'm going to bless them and they don't want to worship anymore. I'm going to bless them and they don't want to serve me no more. I'm going to bless them and now they're going to go act wild and... Oh, Lord, this is heavy. Oh, it's heavy. Remember what I'm saying. Money is a magnifier. And why is the Lord dealing with me on living pure and living right and not sleeping around anymore? And imagine if you're sleeping around and then you had ten times more money. And somebody like, money, coming now. And the Lord's like, uh-uh. For you, that's booty call coming. Uh-uh, no. So you got to put your blessing on hold. And some of you get a little something right now, you start acting all bad. This is why insecurity is another mother of poverty. Deal with, if, you're, if you're insecure, you better deal with that thing right away. Because if God blesses you and you're insecure, you'll be, you'll be horrible. You'll start thinking you're better than people. Even in church, you'll start looking at people like, oh, look at my car, look at theirs. And God will say, okay, okay, fool. Oh, this is the other side of prosperity. This is just as important. You were shouting a minute ago. You were like, yeah, no, th this is. That's why I love my wife. No matter how much we've been blessed, and I always tell her we're blessed. Because sometimes we get blessed and I say, see, girl, you married the right one. But she don't care. She care less. She's like, okay, whatever. I was like, it's not that she's not grateful or appreciative. She's just not going to let that get a hold of her. And don't let it get a hold of you either. And I'll make a commitment for it not to get a hold of me neither. And you don't let it get a hold of you, and I don't let it get a hold of me, and, and we'll be fine, and we could just keep prospering and prospering and ride, ride. Hey, hey. Uh, come on. Uh, uh. <laughs> Somebody give God praise. Go ahead and stand on your feet. Band, come up. I'm close. Can we keep teaching a little more? Yeah. Now get your notes. Pick your notes if you're going to need to read this. Somebody say, tell them to use their money. Read it. And they should be in what? That means... Not just give your money, but you got to give your time to the Lord. My time's worth too much. I remember 
Now, yep. I remember I was in uh, Guatemala. Guata, no, Guata, Guatemala, Guatemala? That's what it's called, right? Guatemala. Guatemala. All right, now. I was in Guatemala. And I was at the biggest church, 18,000 people. Seats. It made you cry when you looked at it. They call it Casa de Dios. Amazing. Just like, oh my, I couldn't believe God can do that. Stretch my faith. And, 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 but but the, the pastor's like, yeah, see there? That's a, he's a billionaire. And he was ushering. Oh, see that person parking car? Yeah, they're, they're a brain surgeon parking cars. And I said, Lord, yeah, that's a lawyer right there. Yes. Yeah, serving the coffee. That's Because when it comes to la casa de Dios, we all serve. And I don't want to hear all this. I don't want to hear all this. You got a little money now, and you ain't got time to serve. That's why you ain't got it. That's that adjustment you're going to have to make in this conference. Because God's going to be dropping bombs in this place in the next few days. I mean bombs. It's going to, it's going to be bomb, 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 bomb. And he's going to, your spirit's going to be like, I don't know, something. Like, what do they call them? Steroids, P PDs, what do they call them? Performing, enhancing. Your spirit's going to be like, whoop. And you're going to start receiving. Some miracles and breakthroughs are already happening right now. Because if you change it in the spirit, it'll manifest in the natural. Keep reading. And generous to those in need. See, that's what I want to do. Do you have a heart for that? No, no, listen to me. I know you do, but listen to me. A heart for that? Because most of you do, but some of you don't. You need to get your heart right. It's the biggest honor to write a check every month to support them. I write it. I'm grateful to do that. A big check for these girls. I, I, want, I like to do that. When, we're going to... We're going to open up the, 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 food, the food program next door. and I'm going to be the first to give. I want to do that. That's my heart. Is that your heart? I want to help the poor. I've been there. And then teach them. You don't have to be poor no more. God sets you free from poverty. You could be blessed. Say amen, somebody. You could be blessed. Tell your neighbor, God doesn't mind you being blessed. God doesn't mind you having plenty of money. He wants you blessed, so blessed. So everywhere you go, you can be a blessing, blessing, blessing. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you come walking around, everyone knows, never know. The blessing's coming. The blessing's walk. The blessing just walked in the room. Huh? Share with others. I do it all the time. I literally, I don't want to say this because some of you are trying to manipulate me, so I'm not going to say it. I walk around with money in my pocket all the time. I don't spend it because I use my card. I walk around looking at the Lord, who do you want me to bless? Don't manipulate because I can feel it, you know. Like, Give me the hundred. Give me. I'll, I'll bind you. Come on, somebody. Cause I can feel it. You know, like spiritual manipulation. Like when all the little kids come around me, I always want to give them. That's what we. That's what we want to be like. We want to be. We want to share with others. You have a small group and there's a need. One of the girls in there are struggling with groceries. You want to be like, hey, let's go to the store right quick, and then say, fill up the cart. It's like, why? Don't worry about it. Fill it up. Fill, yeah, fill it all up. Everything you like. And go to the front, pay for it. Come on. That's the kind of, that's the kind of church God wants. The early church had no need. They were well taken care of. And I believe that's where we're headed. We're going to be well taken care of. Because God's going to find a few good men 
and a few good women where he could trust. I'm not going to say few. He's going to find a lot of good men and a lot of good women. Now tell your neighbor, tell him by doing this, you're going to store up treasure in heaven, man. That means when you get to heaven, you're going to be blessed right now on the earth. Nice. Like I live off the leftovers. I do. I live off the leftovers. I was telling somebody the other day, he's like, man, I said, yeah, these are the leftovers. I live off the leftovers. And I'm live good off the leftovers. Because the majority of my money, I'm a blessing. And I want, I want my kids to be like that. And I want my spiritual kids to be like that. That you live off the leftovers and you live well off the leftovers. You live better than anyone you know. Come on, somebody, shout in here. This is powerful. This is the heart. And this is what I wanted to preach more than anything today. I want you to get the heart of it. Because, you know, Jesse's coming. He's going to drop it. Boy, he's going to drop it. That boy carries an anointing. He's one of my favorites. And then the doctor's coming. Bill Winston, my God. I mean, I told Liz that I said, I said, I, I, said, I have a little bit of a, a bad motive about bringing these guys in. She's like, what is it? I said, well, I know I'm bringing them for everybody, but I'm going to be sitting up there for me too. Come on, somebody. I'm going to be eating, Doc. <laughs> Save it, somebody. We're going to eat some steak up in here. And some of you can't go to these meetings I get to go to. But thank God the meeting's coming to you. Give God a shout of praise. Now tell your neighbor, a prosperity mindset is a humble and broken and grateful mindset. How many are going to stay broken before the Lord? Teachable. Come on. And I got to be honest, some of you have seen God bless you, and it makes me so happy. Because you haven't changed in a bad way. You're still here serving. You're still worship. You're still teachable. And it's, you know what the truth is? This is the truth. The more he gives you, the more it breaks you. When it's done God's way. Tell your neighbor, a prosperity mindset doesn't put trust in money, which is so unstable. But a prosperity mindset trust in a loving Father who richly provides everything we need. So tell your neighbor, neighbor, let them shout for joy. And be glad. So tell your neighbor. Psalms 35. Verse 27. This was King David. He loved God. And he was very wealthy. And King David said, Let them shout for joy. 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 And be glad. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause and tell your neighbor you're going to have to change your confession 
You're going to have to get that poor language out of your mouth. You're going to have to get, we're not going to make it out of our mouth. You're going to have to get, we don't have enough anymore out of your mouth. You're going to have to get, we don't know what to do out of your mouth. You're going to have to get, we don't have enough out of your mouth. Come on, tell your neighbor, let them say, come on, run. is that the right neighbor? Tell your neighbor, let them say continually, let the Lord, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure, who has pleasure, who has pleasure, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Now give God a shout for joy. And be glad. And now give God a shout. Somebody lift your hands. and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord has set me free. The anointing of the Spirit of God has set me free from poverty. Every curse in my family of lack, of insufficiency is broken by the power of the blood of the cross I declare that Jesus Christ has redeemed me and my family from the curse of poverty I declare I come out of Egypt with my silver and my gold I am obedient and I listen and I'm blessed with prosperity forever. I declare I am the head and I'm not the tail. I am above and I'm never again beneath. I declare that I declare that the love of money will not rule in my life. I desire to prosper so I can give and be a blessing and I declare that the blessing of God is making me rich and all sorrow and pain leave my life and my family forever and as I give I am blessed now and forever in heaven I humble myself before God and I'm grateful and I'm happy on my way to more. So in the name of Jesus, I shout for joy and I'm glad because the Lord takes pleasure. 